If you're wondering why you don't have a jetpack, a hoverboard, or any of the other stuff that we were promised decades ago, this is the show about why we've not gone to Mars yet. So stick around. And if you're not interested in sticking around, the simple answer is, it's damn expensive and f***ing dangerous. If people want to go to Mars anytime soon, they have to be prepared to die. It's difficult to put odds to this, but in my opinion, if you want to ride NASA's system for getting to Mars in a decade or so, or Musk's Starship in a few years or so, we're looking at a greater chance of dying than staying alive to enjoy the Martian view or the rise and fall of two glorious moons in the sky because we are simply not ready. And the simple reasons for that is that space exploration is really, really expensive, meaning government agencies had to take the lead and they're risk averse. They're also fighting off competing interests of commercial companies trying to sell their hardware and the public quickly get bored. Now that is changing with commercial space companies, but I'm not sure that's as cut and dried as many will have you believe either. But let's take a look at public attitudes to space. Most people know American astronauts went to the moon in the black and white days. Very few will know what year America put the first human footprints on the moon. Even fewer will know that there were more missions to the moon than Neil Armstrong's flight. They might know that that moon program was called Apollo, but only space nuts like you and me will know that the current NASA program to return to the moon and push on to Mars is called Artemis, the sister of Apollo in Greek mythology. Or that the cancelled NASA program before that was called Constellation. Or that George Bush 1's program before that was called the Space Exploration Initiative. And that's because we've heard it all before and we don't believe it's going to happen. So why pay attention when the president or more traditionally the vice president says we're going to Mars? Unless you're a space nut constantly being duped into thinking this time it's really going to happen this time. Because really only the US or a US led international consortium has the money to go to Mars. And at the moment the US doesn't even have a functional moon rocket let alone a spacecraft to go at least 200 times further than humanity has ever ventured. And anyway, when the American public are seeing rising gas prices and high school massacres, who's going, we gotta go to Mars. It's almost like it needs to be done by stealth, under the radar, so no one utters those soul-destroying words. Why are we spending money on space when we've got so many problems down here on Earth? as though closing NASA today would mean no one in America would go hungry next year or the holes in the roads would be miraculously filled. But this whole head to Mars idea is something that can't be overcome. It's part of the human condition towards curiosity and exploration that helped us cover the earth from our primitive origins on the African plains and savannas. It's what made us fashion tools to make tasks easier or better. It's what drives us today to build new technologies or explore the most hazardous places on Earth. For the adventurous, climbing mountains or exploring underwater cave systems is a hobby that would have had a 99% mortality rate just a hundred years ago. This is that really innate built-in drive that humans have to go and explore. And when you've got rockets, space agencies and billionaires with space fetishes, then the next big push is inevitably going to be the next easiest place we've never been. People have been in orbit around the Earth continuously since November 2000 when the International Space Station became fit for permanent habitation. And in fact, many of the lessons we've learned for long duration space travel and survivability have come from that 20 plus year rotation of space station crews. Beyond low Earth orbit though, humanity has only been to the moon. Nine short and dangerous missions between 1969 
and 1972 as the main aim of the Apollo moon program. The first moonshot swung around the moon without landing to leapfrog the Russians and test out the ability to get to lunar orbit. The second flight to the moon re-ran that initial flight but with a lunar lander that wasn't equipped to land and return from the surface. So they practiced separating from the mothership and swooping down to within eight and a half miles of the lunar surface. Everybody knows about Apollo 11 which immortalized Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as they became the first people to achieve the impossible, taking human footprints from the African savannas to the surface of the moon in tools that have evolved from flints to butcher meat to spacecraft capable of landing on another world. It had taken humanity two million years of evolution and technological development. And it's worth remembering that Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin gave themselves a 50-50 chance of succeeding with the first moon landing attempt. Pete Conrad and Alan Bean, who you can hear my interview with here, were waiting in the wings to step into history if they failed. As they made the second moon landing in 1969, most people haven't heard of them. But they've heard of Apollo 13, because that had an explosive technical failure that crippled the spacecraft and cancelled the moon landing. And just getting them home alive became the success of that flight. But there were also four more successful flights to the moon after Apollo 13 that again, most people aren't even aware of. Perhaps because landing on the moon had been ticked off the list. It had been done. It looked easy. What's next? Well, even before Armstrong's first footprint in the lunar dust, NASA and the big defense companies that built the space hardware and often tried to influence the commissioning of new, ever more expensive space programs, were drawing up plans for nuclear-powered spacecraft to take people to Mars. Russia also had designs for a human mission to fly around Mars and Venus using their giant N1 moon rocket, but that only flew four unsuccessful test flights and was cancelled, killing both their moon and Mars ambitions. But NASA's then Deputy Associate Administrator for Planning at NASA headquarters, Werner von Braun, who designed the Saturn V rocket that got humans to the moon, pushed for a Mars program to follow the Apollo moon program. But then the partial nuclear test ban treaty hampered the progress of nuclear rockets and funding dried up after the success of Apollo with Richard Nixon choosing a cheaper space shuttle over a push to Mars. And that's where we've languished for 50 years, confined to low Earth orbit and robotic missions to other worlds because getting to Mars is really tough. Before you even think about landing on the surface or surviving the impossibly harsh environment there, you need giant rockets, far bigger than the Saturn V moon rocket, or fuel depots en route to Mars to refuel. And you're not hoping there's no technical or medical problems for just 12 days like you are with a moon landing. You need a look on your side for almost two years to get to Mars wait for a favorable orbital alignment with Earth, and get back again. So, 50 years on from Apollo, are we now ready? And I'm gonna say no. And a lot of you are going to be disappointed. A lot will be angry. Some will say, I don't know what I'm talking about. And some will agree with me if they're using their heads, not their hearts. Don't get me wrong, I want people on the moon, on all the rocky planets of the solar system, the moons of the solar system, large asteroids, and thinking about how we propel humanity to explore star systems light years away. But we didn't get the post-Apollo dreams of hotels in orbit, a moon base, and the first human footprints on another planet by the 1980s, which surely would have inspired industry to commercialize space freed up more money from the federal government, letting NASA think big and take humanity further than 250 miles above our heads for the last 20 years. Project Artemis is now getting ready for uncrewed flights around the moon, and then humans in an 
ever slipping timeline that looks likely to be delayed now until 2027, sadly. The depressing news in Ars Technica recently suggested the Artemis moon base is now slipping back to the 2030s, meaning NASA are very unlikely to have the funds or the ability to push onto Mars before the 2040s. And with new administrations, who knows what takes its place. China have ambitions, but despite the Western fears, they're so much further behind the US with Taikonauts just building and entering their own much smaller space station and sending rovers to the moon. If Mars is too difficult and expensive for the US right now, China can only play catch up over the next 20 years and then they'll be still 20 years from a realistic, viable human mission to Mars. So like the cure for cancer or fusion power, NASA going to Mars always seems like being 20 years away. Now, of course, the elephant in the room, SpaceX, are showing a lot of promise, a lot of flair, and a lot of progress. But you'll have to wait for next week's show to hear our thoughts on whether they'll get people to Mars first. Or if you're watching this in the future, make sure you check out that video here.